In this video, I want to talk about how to deal with third parties or any other circumstances when it comes to your manifestations. And I'm also going to share with you my own personal story on how I was able to deal with uh, actually multiple third parties, not just one, when I was trying to manifest a specific person into my life. And if you want to learn more about that, stay tuned and let's get started. Welcome back to this video. My name is Rab. I'm a manifestation coach and I do offer one-on-one -on -one coaching sessions. If you guys want to work with me, the link is down in the description box below. So let's talk about third parties, how they are created and how you can uncreate them in your reality when it comes to manifesting. This is something that I've suffered with for a long time because I think it does come out of a, your own insecurity, to be honest. Since I was a little kid, I think one of the beliefs that I had was, you know, the good things that I want are always going to go to somebody else. So growing up, I manifested a lot of situation where it was not just about like, you know, a specific person or when it comes to relationship, but even in other areas of my life, for example, when I wanted scholarship, the scholarship would go to someone else. It took me a long time to realize that all of these situations, they were being actually caused because of my own insecurities, where I feel like either I was unworthy of having the thing that I wanted or because I just thought that there was someone else who was more deserving of the thing that I wanted than me. But those are the kinds of doubts and insecurities where you have to watch for when it comes to your manifestations. And even Neville Goddard, he talks about this in one of his um, talks. I forgot what exactly the talk is, but uh, you know, he talks about when he was trying to manifest a house, he had some kind of doubt show up. And this doubt manifested as another person who actually won the house or who, who actually bought the house before he did. And the way we get over these is by looking at the issue and addressing them and just not acknowledging them afterwards. Going into my personal story, I wanted to share this quickly with you just to give you a perspective on how you can actually gain some insights from it and apply it into your own life. This happened when I was in my final year of my university and I was a film student back then. One of the projects that I had to work on was uh, make a short film. I hope these people, they do not watch these videos because it's gonna be sort of embarrassing to be honest, but I'm gonna share it with you regardless. I'm just like an open book when it comes to sharing my own stories. I think you guys might know that. What happened was I had written this script which involved a couple of different actors and actresses. During the auditioning phase, I found someone, the person who was supposed to be the actress on, on the movie. So in the beginning, you know, the relationship was professional between me and her. I was the director, she was the actress, you know, that was it. But later on, as we started working more and more, because she was one of the first person that I was able to find for the project, and she was really actively involved in it because she was a film student herself. You know, so we started working very, very closely. I could already sense that we had this great connection going on. But what started to happen was she started really getting close with one of the actors. Started making me very, very insecure and they even started going out on dates and things like that. You know, so I felt very disheartened to be honest. It got to a point where they were actually, you know, starting to be really, really intimate on the set. They're not kissing or anything, but just staying very close and all that kind of stuff. It would really, really make me jealous. But then after that, there was also one scene where she had to, you know, um, this actress had to kind of go with the other actor who was her act actually her friend too you know so they started becoming really really involved for like the next few weeks the envy or the jealousy started to really kind of sneak up on me without me even real realizing it and during this time i even ha started to have some feelings for her but she started getting more aggressive towards me just like really you know being really rude at me during the set and all that kind of stuff and I, ha I had no idea where that was coming from it got to a point where i was like really really frustrated i, I would just didn't want to be the part of the movie at all even though i was the director during the last day of the filming i was i developed this like strong sense of faith in me just by reminding myself that I was the director of the movie and everybody else were just actors that I'd appointed on my set, right? They were only there to do their job and after they were done, everything belonged to me. The video footages, even the props, everything belonged to me because, you know, I was the director of the set. So I had to remind myself that, okay, everything that I'm creating here is my own creation, at least for the movie. 
and everything belonged to me, right? It was my reality that I was living on. As soon as I did that, I was just able to get my power back in an instant. I didn't really care between what was going between her and the other actor, and I just told myself, no, they're just having rehearsals. That's it, they're done. No matter whatever I saw during you know, the filming before, that doesn't even matter. Whenever she comes today, I'm just gonna be really, really professional. But after the set is over, after this, this filming is over, I'm gonna ask her out. You know, so that was the mindset that I had. And you know what happened like that day after the filming was over, I don't know what had gone between her and the other actor, but she didn't want to talk to the other actor. Like, you know, besides just the filming part, they did, they did, did their part. Then after that, it was almost like nothing happened between them two. But she was just trying to come more towards me. And I was like, what, what is going on, man? I wasn't even sure what was going on. But it was just reminding myself and affirming to myself like, I have the power, this is my reality, and nobody else can do nothing with this. I was just reminding myself that this is my production, I am the director of the movie, everything is under my control, right? That was the only thing I was trying to say, I wasn't even trying to control them or anything specifically, but that's, that's the kind of mindset that I was going into, and all of a sudden, she starts being more attracted towards me. And by the way, we did end up dating for a couple of months after that. So what I wanted to remind you was, you are the creator of your own reality. That was not just my set, but that was my own reality too, I was creating. And this reality came because I was having a lot of doubts and insecurities, because when I saw them rehearsing and them going out and all that stuff, I was just assuming that, you know, I could never have her. Also, the guys were much more attractive than me, both the guys, you know, because the, they were actors. They were like looking like models and, you know, I, well, I didn't think that I was like as attractive as them or anything like that. So at the end of the day, when I decided to bring the power back to my hand and just assume that, you know, I'm good enough, you know, this is my production. I think it's a possibility that she could actually like me, but also I kept reminding myself she really liked me during the production, you know, because she wouldn't have gone all the way out to kind of help me all these things during the set and all that kind of stuff. I, I just assumed that she was actually helping me out because she was also sort of attracted towards me, otherwise there was no reason to do that. But because my assumptions were intact, I kept coming back to the same assumption, it got hardened into fact. If you have third party in your life, just remind that they are in your reality, they are, they are in your vicinity. If you need to do any healing work on yourself when it comes to jealousy or anything like that, go ahead and do that. Tapping is one of the EFT tapping is one of my go-to things when it comes to things like that. So whenever these doubts and insecurities come up, do not feed them. You know, the, the worst thing you can do is actually feed them because these doubts and insecurities are gonna manifest into third parties. And if you have third party going on, you can just look at your own doubts and insecurities and when you start healing them, that's when they just disappear out of your life. Magical things will happen, guys. I, I mean, I'm pretty sure. Magical things will happen to just get you closer to your manifestation. You know, I, I think someone else commented in my video about how to deal with a third party recently. So that's what this video is all about. So I'm sure this video was of some help to you guys. And if you found this helpful, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the like button. Also feel free to leave the comments down in the comment section below. That being said, I wanna wish you all the very best. Goodbye and namaste.